Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the delivery of the host or the recombinant DNA into the host cells and in this discussion we were, uh, what we were discussing that you can successfully uh, transfer uh, or deliver the DNA into the host cell by adopting two strategies. In strategy number one, you have to uh, you have to work on the surface chemistry of the host cells and according to the surface chemistry you can devise the mechanism so that you will be able to uh, uh, you will be able to attract the DNA and as a result the the DNA will be get entered into the host cells. We have discussed about the transformation into the bacterial cell as well as we have discussed about the transformation into the yeast cells. But there is an alternate strategy and why there is alternate strategy is required because in the case of mammalian cells, the surface chemistry of a mammalian cell is very very complicated compared to the bacterial cell or the yeast cells. For example, a mammalian cell of the liver origin, a mammalian cell of the pancreas origin or a liver or a mammalian cell of uh, brain origin. All these three, cell, three different uh, cells from the three different origins uh, are of going to have the very, very, very diversified surface chemistry and because of that you cannot devise the mechanisms which are going to work on the surface chemistry to deliver the deliver the recombinant DNA. In those cases what you have to devise is you have to work on the basic uh, principle of delivery of a molecule into the into the mammalian cell and you have to change the DNA in such a way so that the DNA will be will be accepted by the host cells. So, in the today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the different strategies what people utilize to deliver the recombinant DNA into the mammalian expression system or mammalian cells. So, for DNA delivery in the mammalian cell, people are mostly, disc uh, mo mostly utilizing the four different strategies. The strategy number one is called as the chemical transfection methods. In the chemical transfection method, people are using different types of chemicals and these chemicals are making the complexes with the DNA and as a result, they will be taken up by the cells. Whereas, in the other approach where people are using the liposome or the lipocomplex methods, in these cases, they are using the lipids and these lipids are making a complex with DNA or in some cases these lipids are forming the vesicles and these vesicles are engulfing the DNA and then these vesicles are fusing with the host cell and as a result the DNA, the recombinant DNA is being delivered to the mammalian cells and then it is going, it will reach to the nucleus and it expresses its uh, recombinant gene what you are putting into this recombinant DNA. The third approach is which is called as the bactofactin. In the bactofactin you are using the bacteria as a uh, as a vector or bacteria as a source to deliver the DNA into the uh, into the mammalian host. Similarly, in the fourth approach is called as the transduction. In the transduction instead of bacteria you are using the virus and this virus is also uh, the delivering the 
recombinant DNA which is present inside the virus to the mammalian cells. So, let us start with the first approach which is called as the chemical transaction methods. So, in the chemical transaction method as you know that the DNA is negatively charged ok. So, what you in one of the approach what you can do is you can take a syringe or something and directly transfer this negatively charged DNA into the cell, but you know that this kind of uh, uh, this kind of thing is not possible or it is also required the extraordinary infrastructure. So, that you have this kind of micro injections which can transfer the DNA into the whole uh, into the mammalian cells that is why and this negatively charged DNA is problematic because it, it, it can ripple from the uh, host uh, negative DNA host uh, uh, the surface uh, the surface charge present on the on to the mammalian cells. Because of that what you are going to do is you are going to add the chemical molecules which are mostly being uh, cationic in nature or positive, positive in nature. Because of that the DNA is going to have the negative charge as on one side and it is going to have the positive charge on other side and as a result it is going to make a complex and these complexes are being taken up by the mammalian cells in a process known as the endocytosis and that is how they will going to reach to the uh, nucleus and then uh, then in the nucleus this uh, chemical molecule what you are using is going to be released and the DNA is going to be free for downstream expression processes. So, as the, as the as it says the chemical chemical transfection methods or techniques the principle behind the chemical transfection method is to coat or complex the DNA with a polymeric compound to a reasonable size to precipitate which means you are going to generate a macro uh, macro size particles and once you generate a macro size particles these particles are being going to be taken up by the plasma membrane which is a process known as the endocytosis. There are several chemicals or several multiple chemical compound have been discovered which can be able to make complex and deliver DNA into the mammalian cell. Let us see what are these uh, methods. So, the first method which people have discovered is called as the calcium phosphate method and in the calcium phosphate method DNA is mixed with the calcium chloride in a phosphate buffer and you incubate this for 20 minutes. Afterwards the transfection mixture is added to the plate in a drop wise fashion. So, what will happen is the calcium chloride in the phosphate buffer is going to generate the calcium phosphate and these calcium phosphates are going to make the complex with DNA and when you will spread this particular transfection mixture drop wise onto the cell this, uh, this complex is going to be settled down onto the cells. So, DNA calcium phosphate complex forms a precipitate which means it is going to form a macro structure or macro size uh, particles and these particles will slowly slowly will settle down onto the unilayer of mammalian cells which you are going to have on the plates and they will deposit onto cell as a uniform layer. So, it will be like you have the cells on the petty dishes and when you plot it is actually going to make a, a cover or curtain kind of situation. So, the whole cell is if you see these cells under the microscope what you will see that the cells are covered with a very very fine powder like structures ok and these powders are nothing but the, uh, the calcium phosphate particles which are already engulfing the DNA. So, once these particles will settle onto the mammalian cells the mammalian cells have a tendency that they will take up these particles through a process known as the endocytosis. This is exactly the same process if you are providing the food to the mammalian cell to eat. So, in those cases if the food is macro structures which means it is of beyond a certain size these food is going to be taken up 
by the process known as the phagocytosis. So, if the process, if the cell will take up these particles, these particle will enter into the cell under the active mode where the cell is going to take up the particles which are being spread on it as a powder. So, then what will happen is the particulate matter which is actually the powder which you have put onto these cells are being taken up by the endocytosis into the internal storage of the cell. The DNA is and you know that the internal storage environment after the endocytosis is not very uh, it's not going to uh, keep the calcium phosphate to form the complexes. So, once it enters into the cell and it is going to the storage area, the calcium phosphate is going to be released and the free DNA is going to be available for to escape from the precipitate and to reach the nucleus. And although the mechanism how the DNA is escaping from the calcium phosphate. Uh, precipitate and how it is reaching to the nucleus is still not known. This method suits to the cells which are going growing in a monolayer which means if the cells are making a monolayer of the or the thin sheets or thin layer or the cells which are present in the suspension which means the cells which are growing in the in the in the suspension just like the bacteria. So, they are not making the cell to cell contacts or they will be good for the monolayer, the cells which are forming the monolayer. But the technique is inconsistent and the successful transfection depends on the DNA phosphate complex particle size and which is very difficult to control. So, in one of the major drawback of this particular technique is that the first of all it is only suitable for the cells which are adherent or which are suspension uh, for the adherent cells, the cells which are forming the monolayer. So, if you can imagine that if you are working with the cancer cells and they are making the multimers because you know that the cancer cells will stick to each other and then they form the foci and all this kind of multilayered cells, then the calcium phosphate method is not very suitable or it may not give you the optimal transfections. Uh, same is true for the uh, su uh, suspension cells also. If the, if the cells are present in the suspension, they should be the single layer suspension, not the uh, cells which are present in the suspension with the multiple cells adhere to each other or forming the complexes. The second thing is when you are adding the calcium phosphate to the DNA, the calcium phosphate is making an aggregate with the DNA and these aggregates actually uh, you have to optimize in which the calcium phosphate aggregates are forming because once they start forming the aggregates initially the size of these aggregates are going to be very small and but as the time will pass these aggregates are going to be bigger and bigger and bigger because these are non-specific aggregates they are not forming by through a ordered fashion or something like symmetry related uh, rearrangement of the molecules. So, these going to be uh, smaller at the beginning, but they will grow as the time will pass and that is why it is it requires a significant amount of time to optimize the time as well as the temperature as well as the media in which you are going to develop these aggregates and that is why it is very very cumbersome. Apart from that you have also multiple disadvantages. One of what is the disadvantages? The calcium phosphate method is causing the severe damage to the cellular integrity due to the particulate matter settling onto the cell. So, you can imagine that you have the heavy particles which are settling onto the cell and these monolayer mammalian cells sometimes the monolayer mammalian cell for example, if you are working with the endothelial cells or the epithelial cells these cells are very delicate. So, if you are putting a very huge size particulate matter onto them, it actually causes the physical damage to the cell and once it causes the physical damage, it is actually not going to allow the these cells to recover post transfection and that is how your overall transfection efficiency is going to be very, very low which means the calcium phosphate method is 
having the two disadvantages one it is inconsistent because you cannot control the aggregation of those particles and the size of those aggregates because the size itself decides what is the transaction efficiency you are going to achieve at the end. The second since you are working with the uh, aggregates these aggregates are also going to cause the physical damage to the cell and that may, may compromise the survival of these cells post transfection. The third method so, at the end it reduces the cellular viability and it causes the significant cytotoxicity to the mammalian cells and that is why the calcium phosphate method is not very popular for the cells. The third the other method is called as the uh, polyplexus method. So, in the polyplexus method what you do is you make the DNA complex with a chemical agent to form the soluble precipitate or the polyplexes. So, this method is different from the calcium phosphate method because in the calcium phosphate method the aggregate what you are forming is the aggregating agent like calcium chloride and the phosphate buffer is non-specific in nature that is why you cannot control the size of those aggregates and that is why you need an optimization in the case of calcium phosphate method. Whereas, in the polyplexus method you will use the polymeric substances which are going to form the aggregates of the defined size. So, these polyplexes they will make the uh, complex with the DNA through electrostatic interaction which means the DNA is going to be negatively charged and these material what you use for making the precipitate is going to interact with the DNA with a positive charge. Example in the case of poly, uh, polyplexes are DE dextran. Uh, positively charged cationic lipids such as transactine and the polymeric amines such as the polyethylene amine. These are the, the all these three different categories of particles such as the carbohydrates, you have the lipids such as co which are called as the transactine or you have the amines all these three categories ca are suitable for this purpose. The soluble aggregates of DNA with the polycationic complex is readily being taken up by the cell and it reaches to the nucleus for expression. So, what you are going to do in this uh, uh, poly polyplexus method is that what you will do is you take the polyplexes in uh, the, the, the transfection reagent in one of the appendoffs, then you will take the plasmid DNA in that other transfection, then you what you do is you take the equal amount of both the uh, the transfection reagent as well as the plasmid DNA and you mix them together and incubate for half an hour and or the 30 minute 20 minutes to form the DNA liposome complexes and once this is formed then you plate it onto the cell and you put it onto the cell in a in a in a drop wise and then you allow them to in, in incubate with the cell for overnight and once you do, do that and you allow them to recover from the uh, stress which has been exerted by the transaction, what you will see is within the 24 hours the, the, the DNA what you have put into these plasmids will reach to the nucleus and they will going to show you the expression. Now, the th uh, second approach is called liposome and lipopl lipoplex transfection method. So, the liposome and the liposome transfection method is as an alternate approach where you are going to use the DNA transfection in animal to pack the DNA in a lipid vesicle or the liposome. You know that if you take the lipid vesicle and sonicate, these lipid vesicles will rearrange and they will form the liposome. These liposomes are the, lip, the kind of a bilayer uh, vesicles and inside they have, a vol they have the uh, uh, space where the material can be stored. So, so, the DNA containing vesicle will be fused with the cell membrane and deliver the DNA to the target cells. The preparation of liposomes and encapsulation of DNA was a crucial step to achieve the good transfection efficiency. The liposome prepared with the cationic or neutral lipids facilitates the DNA binding to form the complexes. So, what will happen is if you take the cationic lipids which means if you take the positively charged lipids 
while you are making the liposomes these cationic lipids are going to attract the DNA which is negatively charged and that is how the DNA will aggregate onto these vesicles and these vesicles are going to be taken up by the cell very easily through a process known as the endocytosis. The liposome method was applicable to a wide variety of cell and found to transect large size of DNA. So, that is the advantage that the liposome mediated transfection is as universally accepted for many mammalian cells and in addition you can use this method to transfect the large size of DNA as well. Uh, another advantage of the liposome or lipoplex is that the addition of ligand in the lipid bilayer it can be used to target the specific organ in the animal or or a site within the uh, within the organ which means what it is saying is that if suppose you have prepared the uh, liposomes and suppose you add a ligand which means suppose you add a antigen which is for the liver okay then and suppose you load this with the with the plasmids then what will happen is if you if you take these uh, transfection uh, mixture and inject it to the animal then what will happen is that within the animal it will not at least it will not only going to transfect the cells it will reach to the liver because of this antigen which is which is going to be recognized by the liver cell and then it is going to deliver the particular type of plasmid to the liver cell and you can express the protein which has been encoded by this plasmids. So, that is how you can actually modulate or you can actually re-engineer the lipoplexes or the liposome vesicles to facilitate the targeted delivery of your recombinant DNA to a specific uh, cells within the organ or within the animal. In a typical liposome mediated uh, transfection what you do is you take the plasmid DNA okay, and then you take the lipofectamine reagent. So, lipofectamine is a patented uh, re, uh, transfection reagent which is available from the company. Then you, you, you take the plasmid DNA and the lipofectamine you mix them together to form the DNA liposome complexes. Then in these DNA liposome complexes uh, once they reach and they docked to the cell these cell will engulf these uh, vesicles through a process known as the endocytosis and once they will be engulfed by the endocytosis they will reach to a vesicular structure which is called as the endosome. So, within the endosome the DNA is being released from the vesicles and then it will reach to the nucleus and within the nucleus it is going to express this protein. So, in a typical lipofectamine mediated transfection reagent or the PI based transfection reagent you have the multiple steps to perform. First you split the cells put it onto a single layer let the cells to be adhered then you do the washing and then you perform the uh, incubations of the plasmid DNA along with the lipofectamine or the transfection reagents whether it is lipofectamine or the PI based and then you can actually add that to the mammalian cells and you can perform the transfection. So, we have uh, in, a, in, a, in a typical experiment of transfection you have to perform multiple steps and you have to take the multiple precautions to perform these transaction experiments. So, in a typical transaction experiments, we are having the following steps. Hello everyone, in this video we will show how to subculture the cells and count the cells and see for the transfection studies. First we have to remove the remaining media, then trypsinize the cells, then we will count the cells and see it. Now I will show how to do trypsinization.
now i am going to add the trip seal to detach the sets After cells are detached, we have taken into clean falcon. Then we have to centrifuge the cells. As the cells are very delicate, we have to centrifuge at 1500 rpm for two minutes. Now we have to remove the supernatant and resuspend the cells in fresh media. After resuspension, we have to count the cells. So I am going to take 20 microliter of this cell suspension and mix with the 20 microliter of tripan blue and count under new bar chamber.
before counting we have to see how a counting chamber or hemocytometer look like this is a typical hemocytometer also called as newbar chamber which contains this squares in upper side and lower side with each square having depth of 0.1 mm and area of 0.0025 mm square now i am going to put a cover slip on this chamber then i will add slowly cell suspension through capillary action it will spread all over the squares So we check the how many cells are there in all the squares. Now we how to count, how to count the cells. So here a typical new bar chamber which contains squares, five squares. So we have to count cells in these squares. So each square is an area of 0.0025 mm square and total small squares 16 so total area of this whole square is 0.04 mm square so the depth of the this each well is 0.1 mm so what what is the volume 0.04 into 0.1 so that is total 0.004 millimeter cube or 0.004 microliter so say we have combined cells in each well say this is a b c d here we have 100 here we have 150 here we have 110 here we have 100 again okay. So, the total cells, we have to take average, that means 100 plus 150 plus 110 plus 100 divided by 4, total 4 squares we are counting. The average is 115, so 115 cells in 0 0.004 microliter volume, so how many cells per 1 ml? So that we can calculate simply 50.004 into 1000. That will give the volume cells per ml.
chemical transfection method, there are wide variety of chances available like using cationic lipids or peptides or polymers. In this matter, we are going to show PA based transfection. For that, we have to mix DNA with the incomplete media first. After mixing, we have to add polyethylene amine directly to the, the mixture. Then we can see a visible white precipitate, which means the DNA is complexed with the PEA and ready to go. The ratio between DNA and the transfection region should be 1 is 4. Let's start the game. We have already allocated incomplete medium. So, for this, we have to add plasmid DNA. the DNA already concentration estimated. The mixing should be proper, otherwise there is no complex formation. You can tap the tube in order to get mixed. This is the PEA transfection reagent. So, this is 1 mg per ml concentration. We added 10 microgram of DNA. So, we have to add 1 is 4. That means, 40 microgram of PEA. So I am going to add 40 microliter of PEA to the cells. mix properly. Incubate the tube for at least 5 minutes to get the complex form. After 5 minutes are over, then we can see a visible precipitate, white precipitate inside the tube. So, I am going to add this complex directly to the cells. Here the wells which contains reduced serum medium, reduced serum containing medium. So, if serum, 10% serum, if we add 10% serum, then it may complex with the, uh, the PEA DNA complex, then it may not get internalized inside the cells. So, we should take care of that.
uh, we have successfully transfected the cells now we will try to analyze whether the transfection is successful or not after transfection we have to keep uh, the transfected plate into co2 incubator for 48 hours after 48 hours we have to observe for uh, transfection under fluorescence microscope these are the non transfected cells and these are the transfected cells as we can see clearly there is a fluorescence in uh, transfected cells and uh, high background in uh, non transfected cells so this confirms the transfection but uh, further uh, we have to analyze for specific protein of interest using western blot so far we have learned that how to transfect the cells we have used the polyethylene imine based transfection reagent which is basically a polymer uh, which conjugates with the dna and uh, the precipitation we will use for the transfection the most of the transfection process through endocytosis during transfection also we have to make sure the ratio between the transfection reagent and DNA should be optimized. The result what we have shown you is the optimized one. So you have to according to your requirement you have to optimize the transfection uh, reagent versus DNA. And also uh, the plasmid DNA need to be contamination free otherwise uh, you can see uh, bacteria gone before the transfection happens. Uh, we can do the same transfection through electroporotic method also but uh, in that case uh, we should not use any salts while preparing plasmid DNA that should be taken care of otherwise uh, there should be some conduction inside the cuvette so it will kill all the cells so these precautions need to be taken now let's move on to the next methods and the next method is called as the Bactofactin, Bactofactin, Bactofactin as na name is suggest in this particular method you are using the bacteria. So this Bactofactin method is more popular in the case of plant. So if you are uh, trying to deliver a gene to the plant you can use the bacteria to facilitate that process. In that case if we, people are very often using a bacteria which is known as the agrobacterium tumefaciens and agrobacterium tumefaciens mediated gene transfer is very very popular and successful in the case of plant whereas in the animal cell the bacteria is actively being taken up by the host cell through phagocytosis and then it is entrapped in a membranous vesicle known as the phagosome then the bacteria get escape from the phagosome and the it get lysed so once the bacteria is getting lysed it is going to be release the dna into the cytosol and the bacteria a bacteria get uh, whereas in some cases what happen is that the bacteria get lysed inside the phagosome and the DNA is released into the cytosol. So both of these mechanism could be possible that the bacteria get escape from the phagosome and then it get lysed when it reaches into the cytosol and that is how it is going to deliver the DNA into the cytosol and ultimately the particular DNA will reach to the nucleus to, ex to express the recombinant, the, uh, protein, recombinant gene. Uh, the, the bacterial species what you use for the mammalian cells are Salmola, Shigella and some more uh, other species. So most of the uh, most of the bacterial strain what you use to deliver the DNA are mostly being infectious bacteria for example the Salmola or the Shigella but when you use them for the mammalian expressions or when you use them to uh, to transfect the mammalian cells what the first thing what you do is you attenuate them so that they should not cause any kind of disease because if that will happen then the, the it will going to make the mammalian cells susceptible for that particular disease and then the mammalian cell may not uh, be useful for downstream experiments or suppose you are asking some crucial basic questions and you would like to use the 
uh, transfection of some of the genes inside the mammalian system, then uh, if it also going to get the disease of salmola or shigella, then th this particular then your purpose of doing an experiment may not be fulfilled. Uh, so, so that it should not harm the host cells. Whereas, in the case of Agrobacterium tumefaciens, the uh, 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 this the Agrobacterium tumefaciens is actually having its own plasmid, which is called as the TI plasmid, and the people are using the TI plasmid to clone the recombinant DNA or recombinant gene, which they would like to transfect into the plant. So, what will they do is they they first uh, uh, the clone the gene into the TI plasmid and then they ta they transform the agrobacterium tumefaciens with this recombinant TI plasmid. So, as a result what will happen is you are going to have the bacteria which contains the TI plasmid which is actually not the natural TI plasmid, but the recombinant TI plasmid containing your uh, recombinant uh, gene. And then this bacteria is going to be uh, going to be uh, used for infection to the plant. So, Agrobacterium tumefaciens has the ability to infect the plant. Once it infects the plant, it causes the wound to the plant. And in, in this process, the bacteria is actively uh, transferring its genetic material. And once it is transferring its genetic material, it also transfers the TI plasmid along with that. And in because of this uh, uh, natural uh, transformation performed by the Agrobacterium tumefaciens, uh, the efficiency of the transformation or the transfection by the Agrobacterium tumefaciens is very high. And you can use the Agrobacterium mediated transfection to most of the plant parts, which means you can use this to express the protein into the leaves, you can use that for other plant parts as well. So, that is why the uh, Agrobacterium tumefaciens is very, very popular for doing the transfe transfection studies into the plant. Now, let us move on to the next method. So, in the uh, typical bacteria vector transfection, what you have to do is you take the plasmid DNA or the vector DNA, you somehow then first in the first step you insert that into the bacteria, which, which is actually the transformation. So, with the help of transformation, you first insert your uh, recombinant DNA into the bacteria and once this bacteria will reach to the cell, it will be taken up by the process known as the phagocytosis and once it will be going to be get into the uh, inside the cell, it will form the phagosome and then inside the phagosome, the bacteria will either release the DNA or the bacteria will come out and get lysed and release the DNA. Either of these uh, approach, either of these uh, scenarios, this release DNA then reach to the nucleus and it will going to express the protein or it is going to express the gene and that will uh, uh, produce the protein. Now, let us move on to the next approach. The next approach is called as the transduction. So, in the bacteri bacteriofactin, we have used the bacteria as a source to deliver the DNA, whereas in the case of transduction, you are going to use the virus as a, um, as a, uh, as a vector to deliver the recombinant DNA. I think if you remember when we were discussing about the viral uh, plasmids or the bacteriophage lambda based plasmids, we have discussed that the uh, those bacteriophage plasmids are going to be packed and form the virus particle and then you can take these virus particle and add it to the mammalian cells. These uh, virus is going to infect the mammalian cells and in this process they will inject the uh, your recombinant DNA as well as their genome. So, the virus particles have the natural tendency to attack and deliver the DNA into the eukaryotic cell. The cloning gene of interest into a viral vector is an innovative way to deliver the DNA into the host cells. If the gene or the uh, adjoining recombination sequences are also being provided, then the delivered DNA is going to be integrate into the host and that is how it is going to replicate along with the mammalian cells. 
the virus has the essential component for expression of a protein required for DNA replications, RNA polymerase and other ligands for attachment onto the cell. So, in this process what you do is when you preparing the, uh, the, the virus particles, you have to ensure that the vector what you are going to use should have the components for DNA replications, should have the component for RNA polymerase and it should also have the other uh, proteins which are essential for making the virus particles and so that it should continue its infection cycle. Uh, the virus vectors contain cassettes to perform all these functions and then it is fully sufficient to propagate independently. Okay? Few virus strains may cause disease if their propagation will be uncontrolled. In this case, a mechanism has been devised to keep a check on uncontrolled propagation of a virus in a cell. Few structural blocks are being placed on another helper plasmid. In this case, the virus propagation only, uh, virus propagate only if the helper plasmid has been supplied along with the viral vector. What it means is that you have the multiple, you what you do is you take the multiple plasmids and in some plasmid you keep the structural components, in some plasmid you keep the DNA, uh, DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase and all that. So, until all these uh, partic uh, all these plasmids are not available, the virus will still be able to replicate, but it will not be able to cause the active infection into the cell, may active uh, disease into the cell. And because of that, you can actually cut down the pathogenic side of the virus, but you can still continue with the infection mode and that is how these uh, viruses can uh, keep delivering the recombinant DNA. The virus which actually cause the disease after integrating into the genome is called as the lentivirus and that is why the lentiviruses are much more dangerous and much more risky to use compared to the adenovirus which you very often use for expressing the foreign gene into the mammalian cell or when, when, when you use the adenovirus for transfecting the mammalian cells. But the lentivirus infectivity as well as the lentivirus propagation to cause the disease can be controlled simply by us, uh, by uh, dev devising the strategies where you keep the different components on the different plasmids so that whenever you require to develop the disease, then only you uh, transfect the mammalian cells with the multiple viruses components and that is how when they will come together, they will form the virus particle which will be infectious. If you keep some of the components away, it will still form the virus particles, but those virus particles may not be infectious or may not be self propagating. They may require that those additional components. So, in those cases, they will still be able to serve the purpose of uh, transfecting the other mammalian cells, but they will not be able to spread the disease on their own. So, with this I would like to conclude our lecture here. Thank you.